guys good evening this is uh, jay from the 0161 we're doing a bit of a special one tonight a late one actually um we're joined by adam feezy from the amazing adam and the Hellcats. adam thank you for joining us bro yeah well, what's going on man thanks for having me ah uh, you know worries man no worries all right adam, well you know as i just said there it's um, a very late one we uh, just decided to get it done let's do it tonight why not we're not doing nothing yeah, yeah. let's get it done man absolutely <laughs> I, I... I usually work till three o'clock in the morning, odd on music stuff anyway, so it's no bother to me. It's no bother to you, yeah. <laughs> All right, Adam, well, um, just give us a, a little bit of a brief history about Adam and the Hellcats, how long you've been going, and um, who influenced you? What bands influenced you guys? Well, um, as far as how long we've been going, that's uh, a bit of an interesting question. I formed the first lineup of this when I was still in music college. I was about 17, 18 at the time. I'm 30 now. So yeah. as you can imagine, this has been a thing for a while. That incarnation of it went for about six, seven years. It, it did OK, uh, but we were very much a Southwest Bristol band, you know, oh, um, I went off doing other things band-wise for a few years. Um, and then eventually after one of those kind of broke down, um, my dad, of all people, Tony Feezy, who is now our drummer, mm -hmm. um, turned around and went, well, why are we fussing about trying to figure out branding for a new band? You've still got all your yeah, Adam and the Hellcats branding and fan base from years ago. I mean, I was still getting asked when I was going to do it again. Yeah, and you know, so um, we decided to put that back together. Uh, there has been a few lineup changes since then, but straight away when we came back out with it, like um, there there was suddenly demand for it properly. It, it really felt like the right time. So um, we went everywhere from sort of oh, it must be. June-ish 2018 that it uh, all came back together. And from there, it, it, it hadn't been on a touring basis. It had been more uh, a gig here, a gig there basis. Yeah, but yeah, we were gigging yeah. most weeks somewhere that wasn't Bristol. Right. And obviously, I love playing my hometown. I love my city and everything. But like, if you overplay the same venues week on week, yeah. it, with the same bands, no one's going to want to come see you after a while. No, Even exactly, your mates yeah. aren't going to want to come. It's saturated. It's just saturated, isn't it? Yeah. Damn straight, damn straight. Um, as far as who influenced me to get into it, that's that's a much simpler answer. Um, and obviously, this is a long time before things became Adam and the Hellcats. I played in a lot of different bands on varying instruments before that. Yeah. But uh, my dad, again, <laughs> that guy's the bane of my life, trust me. <laughs> um, I was about 10 year old and... Um, up until that point, I was only ever hearing music that was like in the charts and whatnot because it was what the other kiddies at school was listening to. Yeah. And my dad kept putting these songs on in the car. And I, after a while, I managed to figure out this is all the same people. Right. Or because uh, uh, two distinctive voices yeah. stuck out. Turned out it was Francis Rossi and Rick Parfit, a status quo. Oh, um, yes, I know that's very unmetal, but <laughs> trust me, go see them live. They're a lot heavier than you think. I've seen Status Quo, they are actually a really good band. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so long story short, went through about six months of dad battling my mum, yeah, to uh let him take me to a show. And um, like occasionally, I'd see him come back from a quo show and he'd be like the happiest he'd ever, I'd ever seen. Him. I'm like, Dad, what's going on? Yeah. He's like, I'll, I'll tell you one day, boy. I'll tell you, I'll tell you one day. Yeah. And um, he, he told me this band I've been listening to was status quo. Eventually he went, would you like to come to a concert of theirs with me? And I've just gone, um, yeah, all right. I didn't even really understand what it was all about. Yeah. And um, ju just imagine being autistic, lot smaller, 10-year-old me 
in front of like a festival sized PA at uh what was it Warwick Castle that was it because they used to do the forest tour every year yeah. now that day was a beast we actually met the beach boys that day who were supporting <laughs> literally caught them coming out of a memorabilia shop in in Warwick and like i recognized them i've just frozen and my dad's just gone it was the first time i uh, ever heard my dad swear he just went boy that's the fucking beach boys <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So we 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 ran up after them, got photos and everything. They've played uh, as great as they are. They're quite easy listening, and, yeah. you know. Comes to about nine o'clock. It's dark. I'm looking at this PA stack, thinking it is going to eat me. Yeah. And um, then lights go down. This low rumble starts. A spotlight goes center stage, and Rick Parfit steps out with his white Telecaster. I uh, I'm sure you know the moment i'm talking about i do i do yeah and uh to me at that age he was the coolest human being i'd ever seen in my life yeah i like most kids of that age kind of go through a million and one phases of what they want to be when they're older you know yeah oh um i just went dad i want to do that i want to be him (laughs) (laughs) Him, you know and it kind of spiraled out of control from there to the point that i now play in a band with my dad <laughs> and um run a flipping rock and roll chat show myself and you know, it's just crazy he really it's all good well um just um obviously something we don't we all like speaking about every every band i speak about uh oh, sorry every, every band i speak to um, the COVID, the lockdown, the bullshit, you know, that, that, that we're all in. Just let us know about Adam and the Hellcats, you know, the, the, the gigs, the um, stroke festivals that you guys have had cancelled. Is that, has any, any of them festival stroke gigs actually stood well, out? Well, um, as far as stuff we had to cancel, we only, at the time it all kicked off, we only had a couple of smaller gigs on the book and a much bigger show that's now been moved to September this year, which the way things are going right now is looking a lot more like happening. Yeah, um, yeah I agree. I agree. Yeah. It, it like, uh, but we were actually planning on getting off the road for a little bit mm-hmm. and really focusing our time into finishing our album Claws Out, mm-hmm. which uh, I'm pleased to say I'm getting the first draft of the mix of the final track back yeah. In about an hour. About <laughs> hour. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, it's going to be a late one for me tonight, yeah. trust. <laughs> yeah. But, um, yeah, uh, as, as far as Claws Out goes, that basically, that song's from the old lineup of Hellcats, various other bands I've been in where I was the main songwriter. Yeah. It's very much just the best of my work right. over the years, you know? Yeah. Oh, uh, it's been probably about three, well, about two years in the making now because lineup changes, obviously COVID and just generally not having the money to get in a studio because then I just went and basically bought my own. Yeah. Own, you know, and yeah. uh, we, we just did it ourselves from there. I mean, I'm not going to show you my messy place. That's why I've got the <laughs> virtual background up, but I've got a vocal booth behind me. Yeah. It, he like uh, it was actually my mum that built that vocal booth. You'll, you'll, like, you'll have to take us on a tour. You'll have to do. Oh, well, one yeah. one day, bro. Yeah, one well, day, bro. Trust me. I'll send yeah. the 016 one a fucking yeah, little Please. studio tour video while Absolutely. I'm working on the next Absolutely. album. Yeah, love that. Yeah, we good. Um, just um, give us a bit of a for people on the 016 one. Obviously, normally we deal with sort of like the metal bands, the sort of like death metal, thrash metal, grindcore, slam, uh, beatdown. Just give us a little bit of. Um, you know, a little bit of... How would you describe Adam and Hellcats? Like, genre-wise, how would you describe them? Oh, oh God. Try to pigeonhole us, you'll break your brain. <laughs> <laughs> really. Um, like, straight up, I'm a rocker. Like, yeah. I I love my metal. I love my thrash. Ash, all of that. Yeah. Love it. Can't play it for Toffee. <laughs> <laughs> but you, the, love it. Uh, you love it, though. Oh, yeah, straight. <laughs> hey, like, But... Um, my metal was always more bands like Saxon and James yeah. Priest and Motorhead yeah. and stuff like that, where it was still very rock and roll at the same time. But no, I don't know. You got bits of the old metal, uh, got bits even that uh, borderline punk. 
Yeah. Um, of course, straight up sort of quo, AC, DC level rock and roll. You've yeah. even got bits of rap rock thrown in there yeah. Uh, yeah. with uh, tunes like the uh, charity single Rule Britannia that we did. Amazing. I mean, that's what we checked out. Amazing. Yeah. Uh, oh, that, that tune, like, it, if you want to know a bit about that, ask away, because that was well, crazy. The- just, just let, just let us know about the collaboration, the people you've got on there. Because well, yeah, um, that was mental. Okay, so basically, I demoed this tune. I it was during the first um, lockdown, and a friend of mine, uh, Tristan Blythe, DJ Highlander on uh, 99 WNRR. Yeah. I, I sent him the demo where it was like just me doing everything. He was like, "Okay, why don't you make this like a heavy rock band aid almost?" Um, I've got a guitarist friend um, who might be interested. So he sent a text, didn't tell me who it was. A couple of days later, my phone goes off and it's Jackie Chambers from fucking girls school. <laughs> <laughs> yes. so, uh, not even kidding me, it, it, not not even kidding man, I, I broke. Like it took me about two minutes to even say a word to her. So then I got a bit cocky. Added Will Taylor from White Raven down, yeah. Orton Golden out of Surge, Luke Short from Raven Breed, um, Tom Weeks Massive from Wagons. Massive Wagons. Uh, Massive. Uh, yes. Um, Adam Thistlethwaite from Massive Wagons. That, that was another weird one. I shot him a message <laughs> thinking, well, it worked with Jackie. Yeah. I might get lucky, but I wasn't expecting it. Yeah. And I wake up, I'd had a few drinkies the night before, woke up, stonking hangover, look at my phone, and it's going off with a Facebook call, and you know it shows the name and yeah, the yeah. picture. And some bloke called Adam Thistleface ringing me, and in my hungover state, I'm thinking, <laughs> "Oh crap! It's the bloke from Massive Wagons!" Yeah. And, and oh my god, um, like shout out to all those guys who came on that. It was a total honour playing with them. Yeah. And, like e- even though I haven't met half of them in person. Yeah. <laughs> uh, um, uh, like and. And trust me, when wagons get back on the road, I'm going to turn up out the back of one of their shows and have a fat <laughs> stack of beers. Yeah, fucking damn it. I mean, Massive Wagons are sick. But, I mean, they're such an amazing band line. Unbelievable. Oh, fucking bro, Bar- yeah. Barry as a vocalist is unbelievable. Barry Mills is such a great vocalist. It's ridiculous, honestly. Uh, although, um, I'm on one of the fan groups and uh, there was this Zoom call that happened a little while back. Yeah. And um, Steve Hall, the guitarist, the younger yeah. lad, yeah, yeah. was in it. Um, he has nearly been killed by Barry on so many occasions. <laughs> the, the mic stand throwing, yeah, <laughs> it, the man's dangerous, mate. Yeah, he is dangerous. The man is dangerous. <laughs> I, love, I love you, Bazza, but you're dangerous, mate. <laughs> He's ridiculous, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey. But yeah, man. Um, just um, I, I'm not obviously I'm not sure about you guys of, of, of what you've done um, during the lockdown stuff, but. What's your your personal view on on the you know the I mean again speak for us we've done a few of these like the social distance stroke live stream events. What's your you know what's your view on it? Are you are you a band that, that embraces that sort of thing like the technology or do you need a live audience to actually you know put a gig on? Well, um, that's kind of a two part answer really, as far as I see it. Um, as far as the socially distanced gigs. I think you guys did a really great thing. Just show more than anything, kind of showing government that people need this. We do. We do. And they're still saying it now. People are still messaging now saying, can you put some on, please? And it's like, mate, if we do, we'll all get arrested. Sadly, oh, yeah. we'll get arrested, mate. And it's like, it's like an illegal rave for rockers now. Yeah, isn't it? exactly. I know. <laughs> but um, it, it, as far as the socially distanced gigs that go, though, yeah. I just don't want that to become too normal. Yeah. Do you get me? Yeah. I want to be back at the front Yeah, with a bunch of sweaties fucking singing our hearts out. Yeah. Oh, uh, uh, as far as live streaming, um, that has been an interesting one for us. Well, we, we, a- we, we, we've, we've done quite a few. We've done about three or four at the moment, and we've still got more booked up in advance. Um, yeah, they're full, you, band, they're full band ones, isn't they? Yeah, I mean, we, we, you know, we've done, we did two bands for the first one, and then we did full like an old dayer for the, you know, the next one. Um, nice. And it, it, you know, it works. I mean, we took donations off people, the band took donations off people, and then it did work. Well, people enjoy. I mean, it, the amount of numbers that people watched it ridiculous. 
Well, we we were planning to do um, a full band live stream sometime in February. Yeah. Obviously, that got canned. Yeah. But what we have done quite a lot of, and uh, people can see on our Facebook page, um, is myself and Kywin, who uh, sings lead with me as well. Uh-huh. We take um, backing track versions of the songs on the album. Right. We've even re-recorded in our own way uh, some covers that we like as well. Yeah. And um, using OBS, we yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, and I've got a full mixing desk here and like DI'd guitar and stuff. Uh, we pipe that out through Facebook Live. Right. And um, those have been doing okay for us, actually. Yeah. Um, I still do want to try a full band live stream. Yeah. Uh, would help if we could actually get in a rehearsal room for a start. <laughs> but, yeah. 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 Um, but that's the thing. It's like a lot of bands can't rehearse, can they? It's like, you know, we've, we've, we have got sort of like practice rooms in Manchester where some of them are staying open. The bands to actually practice and uh, ours is open, but um, a member's got a uh, missus who's needing the shield, so well, that's, yeah, that's it. If you have one, member, um, you've had it, and you've had it. Uh, they've made an agreement that when the cases are like severely coming down, which they already seem to be starting, yeah, they, they are flying down, yeah, they are, yeah, uh, that um, it, like we're probably going to give it another three weeks, month yeah. or so, and then we're going to get back in there and crack on, you know, because yeah. yeah. uh. I should mention, and uh, this will be the first time I've talked about this publicly, that we are actually on the hunt for a new bass player at the moment. Okay. So um, yep. anyone watching, if you happen to be in the well, Bristol area... This, vi- this, video, this video will go up pretty quickly, so yeah. It, yeah, it, if you happen to be in the Bristol area and you play bass and... How about Becky, Bal- like- How about Becky Baldwin? Becky Baldwin's a sick bassist. I couldn't afford Becky Baldwin, <laughs> mate. Come on. <laughs> she might be watching, you never know. <laughs> uh, 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 trust me love becky to bits she yeah. she's even been on my chat show welcome to the madhouse isn't yeah. it? Uh, but also she's abandoned us bristol type she's gone up to, she's birmingham. Gone to, birmingham. I, she's gone to birmingham i will never forgive you becky <laughs> i will never forgive you <laughs> hello i mean she's uh, obviously teamed up with luke aren't she so i mean luke's obviously a manchester boy you know it's um I right. everything's going well for becky at the moment really well Oh, trust me, she, inspiration. She is, and frankly, I, I, I've even I've said it. Well, not quite to her face. It was over Zoom, but yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. No, um, honestly, like if anyone watching this happens to be in the Bristol area and is willing to make a practice every Sunday night and be part of a very hardworking band, I can't promise you lumps and lumps of money straight away i can promise you you're gonna have a bloody good time <laughs> yeah i'm absolutely. and you're gonna play some rock and roll you, got, you know you got a few beers out you got a few beers that's what it's about oh yeah enjoy oh, yeah. yourself yeah all right Adam. well after, uh, after the show after, after the show not before <laughs> not before man. it's all professional um just to round it up adam i really appreciate you jumping on mate tonight pretty quickly um just let people know what you're working on obviously the lockdown is no gigs but giving people more time to come up with ideas working on new material, writing new stuff. Just let people know what you're working on, what you're releasing, mate. Aye, aye. So we've already had, uh, oh, what is it now? Two singles come out from our album, Claws Out. We don't have a release date on the album just yet because the final stages of mixing are happening, but we wanted to get content out to people yeah. already. Um, on the 29th of January, which I believe this video might be out by then. It will be, yep. And cool. Uh, our next single, Bend in the Knee, releases, um, along with a lyric video made by the fantastic Mandy Laurie over at 69X Music. Yep. It, Mandy, love you, lovely. It, but, um, yeah, just, we got tons coming, honestly. Yeah. And uh, I can reveal that even though the first album hasn't quite released yet, we're already into writing and recording our second album. We're... We're not stopping. This COVID shit is not going to beat us. Don't let it beat you guys either. Absolutely. Uh, uh, and I always say to people, a- any fans of my band who like you, you believe in what we do, th- this shit's catharsis to me. Yeah. You know, it's this therapy. Yeah. Like yeah. if you're struggling in like reach out to anyone on the 0161 Absolutely. page. Absolutely. All good people. Yep. Or, and like 
reach out to me and all. Or yeah. honestly, it will help anyone. Our our scene's got to stick together. Absolutely. At a time like this, because Lord knows if we don't sort ourselves out, no one will. Well, the thing is, like you just said there, the good thing is, is you know, we could have a, a band from Bristol, you know, and promoters from Manchester, but it makes no difference. You know, we're still here to be messaged. Anyone wants to chat. Makes no, it doesn't matter. The, the distance, bro. Doesn't, we, it bro, doesn't. we are one six one now. You know, you are all one six one, man. You're on the page. We're chatting. Straight, man. You're all one six one, and obviously people don't know this at the moment, but there's a pretty good chance that we'll see you soon. Obviously, yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> I, uh, I, I can't say anything to that effect. Just neither yet. can I. Neither can but, I. But the, the the one show I can tell you about. Um, uh, the one show we have on the cards right now is the 3rd of September. If anyone can make it to Cardiff, uh, there is a show going on raising money for Huggard, helping the homeless at the yep. tram shed. Uh -huh. The opening band is us. The next one up is Cyteria. That is Jackie Chambers from Girls School Side Project Band. Yep. The headliner is the Wild Hearts. Yep. That we all know what the Wild Hearts. My absolute heroes, mate. Yep, absolute. Such a not gonna lie, banging band heroes. Man. Well, Adam, um, I got to say, mate, um, you want to add anything to the end before we go? Ah, yeah, man, just uh, you guys come check us out. You, you might be 0161, but you can come join Hellcat family as well, you know? Yeah, yeah, we're all, everyone's welcome on the 0161. Everyone knows that no matter where you're from in the world, join our page, you know, and you're welcome. And everyone can um, have the fun and join in our shenanigans. So, yeah, so Adam Feasy from um, Adam and Hellcats. Really appreciate you jumping on tonight, mate. Really appreciate it. It's no worries, brother. And we'll, we'll hopefully see you very soon, bro. Hopefully, oh, mate. you will. You All will. Right. <laughs> Take care, mate. Love you guys. Cheers. Cheers, mate.